When the news broke that Jackson State was stepping away from the Southern Heritage Classic, folks got to lose their mind saying, how in the world can you step away from the Classic? This is something that they've been accustomed to seeing every year, and they're not understanding why would Jackson State want to step away from something like this. Guys, I'm going to tell you right now, when I say yesterday's price is not today's price, and it's only business, y'all want to stick around so y'all check this out. You know it's your favorite coach back at it again. Ten toes down, about to tell you how it all went down. This is Tomorrow Leader Sports Network with your host, Coach Walker. If you're new to the channel, please like, share, subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you can get all the upcoming videos. For all my leaders out there, welcome back. Y'all know the drill. Y'all know the routine. If you haven't done so already, hit that notification bell so you can get all the upcoming videos. Like, comment, and share these videos. And don't forget, tap in a friend or two and tell them to come on in. It's not the positive vibes. We're just having a good time talking about HBCU sports. Also, you can find us on social media. The links are listed down below in the description. So without further ado, Coach is going to go ahead and tap on in this thing. Because I know y'all like, Coach, whoa, whoa, whoa. You talking about it, this is a good idea for him to step away. Uh, yeah. Yes, it is. Y'all want me to put my swack lock homes hat on again? I'll gladly tell you why I say it's a great idea for them to do it. Matter of fact, I'm not even going to put the swack lock homes hat on. Just know this is this is another swack lock homes affair that we're ready to go ahead and get into this thing right now. Because I'm telling you guys. The news that Jackson State abruptly decided that they no longer wanted to play in the Southern Heritage Classic has a lot of folks upset, upset on both sides of the aisle. You got Tennessee State fans. They're upset like, man, why these guys don't want to play us no more? You got Jackson State fans who have been going to this Classic for years, love to go to Tennessee for this event. And they're like, what in the world are they doing? This doesn't even make sense. I'm like, you know, they're making just crazy decisions from the SWAC Bowl, the SWAC games being played in Birmingham, Alabama, to now this, what's going on? Well, let's 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 dissect it like this. We already know that the classic has been around since 1990. Jackson State has only missed two years playing in this classic. So as of right now, this is the 33rd year, if I'm not mistaken, that the classic will take place. Now there was two years that the Classic didn't happen, and which was 2018 due to weather and 2020 due to the pandemic. Now, remember another thing also. I want you to keep these, keep these numbers in mind as we go through this because, remember, Jackson State didn't play in the Classic in 1991 or 1993. Mississippi Valley State played in Jackson State Place, and Grambling State played against Tennessee State in Jackson State Place. So I want you all to remember those things for those two years. Now, if I'm not mistaken... The classic, like I said, the classic is in its 33rd year, missing only two years. I stated that previously. I just want to state that one more time so everybody got it. Now, the classic has definitely had some pretty daggone good attendance with the exception of 20, excuse me, with the exception of 2001 when 9-11 hit and the, the attendance was low, but it wasn't as low as the lowest attendance ever that occurred in this classic. Now, in 2018, the classic didn't happen, like I stated, due to weather. Now, looking back at all of those years of the bowl that has taken place, the average, check out this average, guys, the average attendance in the Southern Heritage Bowl has averaged around 48,280 in attendance every year. Now, I can't tell you no tale. That's a lot of behinds and some seats up there. There's a lot of fans coming to watch that game. So I understand why a lot of you out there are upset at the fact that this game is not happening this year with Jackson State being involved in the game itself. And I'm sure you guys are still wanting that game to go on, but you got to understand one thing. We're talking about business, right? This is business. We're a little bit upset, too, with Jackson State pulling out and not wanting to play the game. I understand. But here's the reason why I say that looking at this information that I'm about to show you that's posted online, this is why it makes some sense for why this is happening. Now, you see everyone to the right of the document. This document I'm showing you right now. I'm going to break this document I'm showing you on the screen. Look at everybody on the right. You see over there, Jackson State, Tennessee State, Mississippi Valley, and Grambling. Those are all of the teams that have played in the, class, in the Southern Heritage Classic. Jackson State and Tennessee State have participated the most against each other as well. Now, this is what I want you to do. Get your pens and paper out with this because I want you guys to really look at these numbers here. Looking at 1991 and 1993, the attendance in 1991 was 25,891 when Mississippi Valley State played against Tennessee State. Now, look at the next year where Jackson State played Tennessee State again in 1992. The attendance was 37,437. 
Now, I know y'all like, Coach, okay, you're giving us these numbers. What does it mean? What I want you to do is I want you to look at the plus, plus minus of the attendance of fans that was in those seats after Mississippi Valley State played Tennessee State, and then Jackson State came back and played Tennessee State the following year. That, that plus or minus was a plus 12,000 more fans in the seat the following year when Jackson State came to play Tennessee State in the Classic. Now, let's look at 1993. Grambling State played against Tennessee State. The attendance was 41,669. Jackson State played Tennessee State the following year, 1994. The attendance was 50,047. That's almost 8,400 more fans in the seats in 1994 to 1993. Now, I know many of you out there like, Coach, come on, man. You're going around the corner with these numbers again. What's really going on? Listen, I'm not trying to take y'all up 75, around 61, back to 64, back down to Memphis to get to where we're trying to go. All I'm wanting you guys to see is the numbers because the numbers is going to help a lot of us understand where the athlete, where in my, my personal opinion, I think the athletic director is going with the, the mindset and the, and the decision on why they came up with a reason on why, hey, why are we playing this game? And I'm, I, I, I'm going to tell you this right now. Looking at the numbers, I know you guys are going to say, well, coach, that's only, that's only an example for one year. I understand that, guys, but guess what? Ask yourself the question, why didn't Grambling or Mississippi Valley State try to go back another year, you know, years after for them to continue to keep playing? That's, that's just a question I'm throwing out there. So, again, another thing i like for you guys to look at the fact that the attendance never dipped below 25,891 or below 41,669 when both Mississippi Valley State and Grambling State played against Tennessee State in this classic. The only year you had a dip in attendance was in, nine, in uh, what's that, 2001, 9-11, in which the attendance dipped uh, to 28,690. It didn't even go below the lowest attendance number that they had, which was 25,891. The point that I'm making to everybody is inflation is a mother. And here again, it's it's in black and white that people could come out to see the classes. But when we're talking about business, this is where the rubber meets the road. When it's written that, and I quote, because I'm quoting this directly from the document that I'm reading here. It says, after the 2014 Classic, Jackson State University and Tennessee State University collectively would have earned more than $9.8 million since the Classic inception in 1990. Stop. Stop right there. Listen. Key word, collectively. Collectively mean there's a group of us getting this, right? So that ain't $9.8 million a piece. So before anybody gets, the, oh, they made much. Whoa, 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 whoa. That, that threw a red flag with me because if you calculate that, <laughs> I, I told you guys, I'm a number guy. I, I am a numbers guy. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm a numbers guy. Um, that threw a red flag for me because of the fact that when you're splitting $9.8 million between two schools over a 25-year period, two of those years, money went to, one year went to Grammar State, one year went to Mississippi Valley State. But Tennessee State has made the money every year. Now, just looking at it from the standpoint of a 23-year period for Jackson State, I gave you guys the numbers. I want you guys to tell me. Leave it in the comments below what you think that number is. And ask yourself, does that make business sense for Jackson State? When it comes to them bringing the band, you bringing the dancers, you bringing the cheer squad, you've got to lodge everybody, you got to feed everybody, what are we talking about? We talking about buses? We talking about planes? What are we talking about getting everybody to this location? Regardless of the fact, you still have to have some type of transportation to get all of that band equipment as well as that football equipment to the location where they're going to be playing at. So that's a lot of money coming out. And I did say feed, right? You got to feed. You got to feed the players and everybody going to and from and while you're there. Now ask yourself. Does that make business sense? The reason why I'm making the point, no matter what I'm making, is because you hear so many times people say HBCU facilities aren't the greatest. Remember one thing. The schools don't own this classic. What I mean by that is there's, there's a person that's in the middle of this thing that brought these two teams together for them to play for as long as they played. And guess what? If the team, if both of these teams was making the money that they that I personally feel that they should be making, 
that's what we would be having this conversation about why some of the why some of the facilities are looking the way that they're looking at a lot of these different universities. Remember, we've heard the stories about Grambling. We've heard people complain about Mississippi Valley State. Heck, we've heard people complain about uh, Jackson State. So I'm just saying, what are we talking about, guys? This is business. I know a lot of folks out there are saying that uh, the athletic director for Jackson State, this is at his feet. All of a sudden, now he wants to pull out of everything. Let me explain something, guys. When you sit down and start looking at your budget for the year, as far as what it's going to cost you to get all of these different entities to where you're looking to go, that's an expense that you're trying to see where, where's this money coming in from that's going to offset some of this. And when the money is not offsetting what you're looking to do, you got to make a change. You, you got to make a change. I mean, let's look at the look at the situation that they got set up for them now with the SWAC hosting games in Birmingham. If they're giving you the facility, you're getting concessions, the uh, the gate, and all they're getting is every you know they're getting everything else that's around the stadium. You're getting everything within the stadium. With that, whatever's going on in the stadium, you're getting that money, and the schools are getting that money and they're splitting it compared to what the the number that you got. Excuse me. I'm afraid. To, I'm a. I am afraid to even say that number to you guys because I think some of y'all y'all might be watching this on TV and some of you might be looking at this on your phone. I think y'all might break something if I gave you that number because you're gonna be sitting there saying, "Ain't no way in the world this is going on." Yes, it is, guys. The point I'm trying to get everybody to understand is this: in order for HBCUs to do better, in order excuse me, in order for HBCUs to get better, they got to do better, and they have to do better when it comes to business. So many times we have been given the smaller slice of the pie, not looking at how big this freaking pie is that everybody else is eating off of, and, and their product is the one that's going out there making everybody else a bigger daggone piece of the pie that you're not even seeing. Explain that to me. That's not good business. And looking at how things are right now, like I stated before, yesterday's price is not today's price. And time, times are, times are going to call for change. So we already know that Grambling State can play that game and it, it'll work out just fine. But we'll see if they're, if they're one of the ones that want to go to it. But I'm not going to hold you guys up any longer. I'm sure I've already held you up long enough. I'm trying to make sure that I give you guys the information as far as what's going on so you can see it and say, hey, dad, coach got a daggone good point. Let's look at it from this standpoint as well. But until next time, if you like the content, please like, share, subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you get all upcoming videos. And remember, be the one and lead.